VYM or the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF just announced their most recent up and coming dividend which should be paid to holders on March 20th. And as you can see right here, the dividend is much, much less than the previous dividend, but not only that, much, much less than the previous March dividend from last year. Now, because of this, a lot of VYM holders, including myself, are sort of upset, hoping that we were going to at least get a small increase year over year for the first dividend payout of 2024. Now, in this video, we are going to dig deeper into VYM, talk about this most recent dividend, and see if VYM is still worth holding after all. I just finished my brand new dividend investing ebook where I share exactly how I went from zero to now over seven figures invested, and also on how I earn more than $6,000 per month in dividends. I also finished my custom dividend tracker that you can use to track your dividend income progress on an ongoing basis. So make sure to grab yourself a copy of my dividend investing ebook and the new dividend tracker today it's the first link in my description now first just to back up for a second we're talking about vym the vanguard high dividend yield etf which is one of the most popular dividend growth etfs across the board when it comes to investors that are looking for dividend income consistently but also want to capture some upside capital appreciation as well and over time at least for the most part vym the vanguard high dividend yield index has been able to do exactly that if we see the performance as far as just price return goes to compare the price of vym today so all the way back in December of 2006, the ETF is in fact up more than double, and that's not even including the decent dividend that it pays. Also, VYM is extremely popular for the buy and hold forever sort of investor because the expense ratio is so cheap at just 0.06%, so it doesn't cost investors all that much to get exposure to some of the holdings within VYM, which also is a huge selling point for VYM. Now looking at the performance for this ETF over the one year, it is up 14.36%. So for a slow and steady dividend growth ETF, there has been a nice jump in share price which investors, including myself, have not mined whatsoever. Now looking into the holdings of VYM, this is going to be the culprit and the reason of why VYM does or doesn't pay dividends higher or lower quarter after quarter, year after year. Now, VYM's holding breakdowns are majority to financials. Then we have consumer defensives, healthcare, industrial technology, and energy. Now, some of the top names in VYM are definitely dividend payers and dividend growers, although some of these names have not necessarily been growing their dividends as fast as previous times in history. But just to name a few, we got Broadcom, we got JP Morgan, we got ExxonMobil, Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, The Home Depot, Merrick, AbbVie, Chevron, and Walmart. Now, just as a side note, pretty much every single one of these stocks individually I either have in my portfolio right now as a long-term buy and hold, or if not, I'm definitely exposed to by the different ETFs that I own in my portfolio. And honestly, I would not mind really holding onto any single one of these stocks. These are all great names in my opinion. But it's also important to mention that VYM does have 453 different names. So you are going to get a small amount of exposure to a ton of different names, which if you are into diversification, that, that's definitely going to be another selling point for VYM. So we went over the price performance and the holdings, but now it's time to talk about the elephant in the room, the newest dividend that was announced. And this is a 66 cent dividend that VYM is apparently going to pay on March 20th, which is coming soon here, and the X dividend date, which is March 15th. Now, I thought it would be sort of useful to get a really detailed look and look through VYM's dividends historically and see maybe if this is just a fluke, maybe it's just a one-time thing. Let's dig a little bit deeper and see how much VYM has paid year over year and if this decrease year over year for the March dividend is something to be worried about. So as we can see right here, the most recent dividend that was announced, which is 0.6555 cents, and this is the March dividend coming soon here. This is minus 8.6% from last March. Now, what we're talking about here is last March in 2023, VYM announced a 71.72 cent dividend, which was up 8.3% from the previous year, as you can see right here. Now, what's also crazy is that the year before that, this is March 2022, VYM's dividend was actually up 0.9%. So basically, let's just say that in 2022, the dividend basically stayed the same at just around 66 cents. Now, this brings us back to March of 2021, where VYM paid a 65 cent dividend, which sadly enough, basically now three years later, VYM's March dividend, which is historically always the smallest one. I get it. I get it. But it still has not grown literally almost at all. And this is since 2021. Now, the March 2020 dividend was 55 cents, so I guess to be fair, since 2021, the first quarter dividend in March has grown pretty substantially at least, so that's at least looking at things on the bright side. 
But to be even more detailed, if we look quarter by quarter, which again, this is just sort of interesting to do, if we look quarter by quarter and see how long it's been since VYM has actually had a decrease from the previous year, it's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's been 11 quarters of VYM consistently raising their dividend year over year up until this point as the most recent, which now they have a minus 8.6% change over the previous year. Now, maybe you're asking yourself, well, why am I even so hyper-focused on VYM's quarterly dividend? Even if it has went down a little bit, over time, VYM's dividends have went up substantially, and this ETF is known to have some decent dividend growth. Now, the main reason I'm concerned about the lack of dividend growth year over year, even for the historical smaller dividend payouts, which is the March payouts, and keep in mind other ETFs like SHD and other dividend growth payers, normally the first dividend of the year is a smaller one, which is fine. But that being said, a lot of investors, including myself, are buying into these names rather than other names like VU or even the S&P 500 because we are hoping and we are banking on substantial dividend increases over time, which is going to allow the cash flow in our portfolio to grow along with the price, hopefully, as time goes on. Now, because that's one of the main premises of why a lot of investors even invest in things like VYM, SHD, that's one of the main reasons investors are interested into these style of ETFs, because they offer, or at least have offered, substantial dividend growth, which not only is going to keep up with inflation, hopefully, that's the idea there, but hopefully even outpace it. Now, in the case of VYM, I don't really think investors have all that much to worry about, especially if we look in December. This last year, December dividend was $1.10 which was up substantially over 97 cents the previous December. So if we look at the last four dividends that VYM has paid, I agree the dividends were substantially bigger than the previous year's dividends, but now this March one is smaller, so it does have investors a little bit worried, and especially for investors that are heavily invested into things like VYM, SCHD, DGRO, some of these dividend growth names, it does bear the question that if or if not these quote unquote dividend growers are going to continue to pay more and more in dividends over time like they have historically. And this is actually one of the arguments a lot of people have against names like SHD, VYM, or DGRO. They say that even though these ETFs have been able to pay more and more in dividends overall over time, it doesn't mean that they're going to do so in the future, and a lot of people think that they're not going to do so. But I think that the reality is, is that even though past performance does not indicate future performance, we do have quite a track record to go off of for a lot of these different dividend growth ETFs. And if you believe in the underlying methodology that some of these high quality dividend growth ETFs offer, I personally think that they are going to be just fine. And I personally think that there's a good chance that the dividends are going to continue to get bigger and bigger over time, even if it's just possibly at a little bit slower rate. Now, what I mean by that is maybe historically things like VYM has had a 7% dividend growth rate, which is substantial, and maybe in the future that might go down to 6% or even 5%. But the reality is for me and a lot of other dividend growth investors, we just want to hold on to assets that are going to continue to go up over time, have a strong basket of holdings, a bulletproof methodology, and consistently pay us more and more in dividends, even if it's at a slightly slower rate. I don't think any of us have too much of a problem with that. But lastly, when it comes to VYM and the most recent dividend announced and the possibility of future dividends maybe being lower, I want to hear from you guys down below. How do you personally feel about the most recent dividend when it comes to VYM? And are you personally still buying more shares from here? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like and, and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by. And if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.